What's up everybody? It's Matt, Comic Quarter 410 here. I'm quite behind on making videos and showing my pickups. Um, I haven't even shown hardly anything I picked up at Baltimore Comic Con or Monster Mania Con. So today I thought that I'd share some of the original art and prints I grabbed at Baltimore Con with all of you. But before I get into any of that, I got some books in the mail from some great friends here on YouTube and I appreciate each and every one of them. First off, my buddy Manny NYC, he went to New York Comic Con and picked up this gorgeous Justice League variant that I wanted. It's the photo cover silver foil exclusive to New York Comic Con. Really appreciate you grabbing that for me, Manny. What a great looking book. Next up, I did a trade with my good buddy Tom Ryan and... If I'm forgetting to show any books any of you guys sent me, because I know some of these, Michael sent me these books over a month ago, so I apologize for taking so long to show them. And if I forgot a book or two that you sent me, I really apologize. They're probably in these three long boxes. But uh, I actually know, Tom, you, you're sending me one more book, so maybe that's what I'm thinking of. But I did a trade with my good buddy, Tom Ryan. Got this Star Wars number 31 I needed with this Carmine Infantino cover. Um... He's sending me a copy of Monstrous number one. And out of the kindness of his heart, Tom knows I collect Disney books, so he sent me Figment number two. I'm not sure if this is a variant or if the one I already have is a variant. And he sent me Figment number three. And also, he knew I needed Howard the Duck number 23 for my run. I'm getting close to finishing Howard, so thank you very much for those, Tom. Really appreciate it, buddy. And it was great catching up with Tom Ryan. And also caught up with uh, Howler Mouse and Charlton 66 at Baltimore Comic Con. We had a great time. Just a bunch of great dudes. And normally Manny comes down. I uh, get to catch up with him and his wife briefly. But Manny couldn't make it this year. So we missed you, bro. Hopefully you can make it down next year. Or I might try to make it up to one of the cons in Jersey. Next up, my good buddy Michael Jocko from Canada sent me these books. Like I said, probably about a month ago. Maybe a little more. But I really, really appreciate it. I know it's not cheap to ship stuff to me. And I uh, actually sent Michael a package myself just recently after my con. So just a cool guy. We always help each other out at our shows. Michael sent me a copy of Jim Lee's Wildcats number one. Great cover. One of my all-time favorites. Didn't have this. And I'm not sure who did this cover. But it is a stunner. Beautiful painted cover here to Scar King of the Savage Land number one. I have the uh, regular ongoing. I did not have this many. But uh need to find out who did that cover of him and Kazar. It's awesome. Sent me West Coast Avengers 25 with this great Al Milgram cover of Wonder Man fighting the Abomination. We both like big fights like that from the 80s and 90s where you just have big sluggers, big powerhouses going toe to toe we're both also big fans of dale keown and michael sent me this warlock number five or warlock five number 16 excuse me it's an air cell book and it has very early dale keown artwork very cool cover there by dale and these blew me away um michael grabbed me a couple of variants from toronto fan expo wanted this as soon as i saw it this is uh bruce tim's variant to batman adventures number 12 absolutely love it loved his batman the animated series and to see his take on this cover is pretty awesome and he also grabbed me this con exclusive foil variant to transformers revolution number one love this cover at first i was a little skeptical here in idw wanted to merge all the mythos of all the hasbro toy properties and i was like eh but reading it i can tell it's done by fans of the properties and they've done it in a pretty reasonable uh, and believable way a uh, short story basically venom and mask they find the transformer spaceship the ark the wreckage they steal some uh transformer cybertronian technology and that's what they reverse engineered into making their mask vehicles and masks that transform and then of course gi joe and zartan get involved with mask and and rom comes in it's actually pretty decent idea and uh really really love this variant beautiful cover Thank you so much for those, Michael. Um, bought some books off my buddy Evan Leahy, and Evan decided to be nice and throw in some books. Uh, he had this dirty pair set. I've been looking for it for a while. Wanted to try and get this on the cheap, but you just don't see it around here that often. And when I have, they 
they knew what it was worth. But um, as most of you know, I'm a big fan of Japanese animation and manga. Uh, collect the Dirty Pair. Love Adam Warren's work on it. And I've wanted this Adam Hughes cover for a long time. It's not a variant. It's just the regular number one. Just very, very hard to find. And uh, Evan sold me the whole set, which I'm glad I wanted this whole run. That's, uh, sorry, that's Dirty Pair Run from the Future, number one. It's the cover everyone wants. Um, very happy with that. Thank you, Evan. Uh, he sent me, I bought a couple variants too, but they're with um, CGC right now being graded, or CBCS rather. Got Dirty Pair Run from the Future, number two. Number three, I believe that's a Bruce Tim cover as well. Very cool. And number four off Evan so very happy to have those and also bought this one one of the few Tron variants that I'm missing New Avengers number seven the Miss Marvel Tron variant by Mark Brooks I think I only need three or four of those now uh, he knows I like Man Thing and Swamp Thing he sent me this variant to Man Thing number three I believe this is a one in 25 and I think it's by Leonard Kirk Pretty cool cover. Thank you for that, Evan. And again, at Boston Con, Evan knows I'm a big Robotech fan, and he grabbed me this silver foil art germ convention exclusive variant to Robotech number one, and I really appreciate it. And I know those foil variants that uh, all you guys grab for me, they're not cheap, so I really appreciate you guys doing all this for me. Very thoughtful of you, Evan. And Evan knows I collect DC Whitman, so... He sent me some free ones, which I thought was really cool. And as usual, I never remember to take the DC Whitmans out of the bag, so I'll know the issue numbers when I show them. So once again, I apologize, but at least I'm batting a thousand in that regard. Sent me this Brave and the Bold Batman and Phantom Stranger Black Circle Whitman, uh, Superboy and the Legion, another Superboy and the Legion. Uh, Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes. Mike Grell cover on that one. His run was legendary on that. And another Batman Brave and the Bold. So, thank you very much for those, Evan, Tom, uh, Manny, and Michael. Appreciate everything you guys do for me. I'm sure you're all subbed to them, but if for some reason you aren't, please go check out their channels and do yourself a favor. On to some artwork. Um... I got two wraparound sketch covers from the Living Corpse crew. I sent my Space Ghost in to be graded. I don't know. I may end up cracking it out because I like being able to look at these wraparounds open up like this. But uh, that Space Ghost worked front and back or as a wraparound. So I sent that to be graded. But Buzz and Ken took this Future Quest blank. <clears throat> excuse me. And did this gorgeous, gorgeous take on the Herculoids. Buzz penciled it. Ken inked it. It turned out great. I really love the way like Zock and Igu and Tundra look. That just Tundra and Zock uh, in particular, I think, are some of the better things I've seen Buzz Pencil in a while. Love Zock's face. Great job on that. So happy with that cover. Those guys take great care of me every time. <clears throat> Got Ramona Ferdon to sign some books. She had some pencil pieces done at her table. This was forty bucks, and I got it just because I never seen her draw a cap. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm kind of disappointed uh, in the fact that the shield's so tiny, but uh, I attribute that maybe partly in, in, in due to the size of this paper, but uh, anyway, you can excuse it because it's Ramona Ferdon, so still pretty cool, and uh, cool to see her drawing characters that she never worked on, that's why I wanted to get that one. Next up, grabbed a few prints here. This is a Wonder Woman print from Joseph Michael Linsner. Had to grab this one. It's uh, Sexy Mary Jane in a tight Spider-Man costume. Really like that one Linsner did, so grab that up. That's probably going to go in a cheap frame and get hung up. And got this Dawn pin up as well. Really like that one. He, um... I got a few sketch covers, I think four or five that are being graded. One of them uh, finally got a Dawn blank and got Linsner to do a Dawn sketch for me on that. So hopefully they'll be back um, in like three months and I can share those. But 
Also grabbed some prints off Frank Cho. This is a Jungle Queen print, limited to 100 copies. And really, really like this one. Signed by Cho and Brandon Peterson. Uh, this was to be his Star Wars number one variant for my local, one of my local stores, Cards, Comics, and Collectibles. Uh, the guy who puts on the show in Reisterstown, but... Disney asked that he not use the slave girl Leah, I believe, quote unquote. I don't know if that's a fact, but he kept it and made it into a print. And the Han Solo variant he did for my for that store is badass too, but boy did I love this when I saw it. So I had to grab that print. <clears throat> uh, apparently he doesn't make too many U.S. appearances, but I got to meet Lee Bermejo this year. Uh, this is a really high quality print it's almost on like a canvas type paper um but this is his variant to conan the slayer number one beautiful painting and lee signed it up here for me um tried to get a uh commission from him but it was such a cluster every morning that uh didn't happen unfortunately but i'm happy with what i got this year Got two prints, if you will, at Monster Mania. I actually got Adrian Barbeau to sign um, my Swamp Thing Annual Number 1, which is where this is taken from. Um, but she had this print, so I got her to sign that too. Very cool. Very, very nice lady. And also at Monster Mania, the original creature. Sorry if this is a little too big here. But... uh the original creature from the Black Lagoon who in 1954 did all the underwater scenes, Riku Browning was there, and he's a legend. So got this print uh, from Scott Jackson, this gorgeous painted uh, piece of the creature. Scott signed it at the bottom, and Rico Browning signed it up top. So very thrilled to have that. That's probably going on the wall as well. Um, I'll try and take this out, actually. Give me a moment. Okay, got two final commission pieces. Uh, this one I am just blown away by. This is a watercolor Joker by the great J.G. Jones. I tried to get on his commission list the year before, and it was full, and he gave me his email, told me to email him two or three months before the show. And he put my name on the list, so first day of the show I go to him to pay him and tell him I want Joker. And he goes, oh, I brought paper and my watercolors if you'd rather me do that. I said, uh, yeah, please. And got this. It just, it still blows me away looking at it that he put this time into it. But this actually only took him about an hour. I should have filmed it, but I sat there and watched him do it. And the cool thing was he had two little girls and a little boy just in front of him mesmerized by him painting and he was so fatherly with these little kids explaining everything and why he's mixing what colors and how he does everything. Just total patience with these kids and answering every question. And uh, his wife had a big smile ear to ear watching him with these kids. So thought that was pretty cool. And the kids were like, that's, for, that's yours? That's awesome. And I was like, yes, I have to agree. That's pretty awesome. Very happy to have that. Uh, that's getting a custom archival frame. And got another piece from the great Marvel Bronze Age artist, Ron Wilson. Um, he had this already done at his table, and it was so reasonably priced. Um, I picked this up. A lot of great ink work on this piece. It's his um, kind of his take on the Silver Surfer 5 cover, I believe it is. The uh, John Basima cover of Surfer and Thor fighting. Really like this. It screams 90s. Even... Um, if I'm getting it wrong, I apologize, but I believe Tom Ryan and uh, and Evan and Hallermouse kind of commented, and Charlton maybe too, about how his surfer in this piece kind of looks very Ron Lim-like, and uh, it does. was really happy with this. His artwork's great, and couldn't, couldn't walk away from the deal he gave me on that. So, very happy uh, with how I did this year. I also have a sketch cover being graded that Ron Wilson did for me, a wraparound. So, yeah, I think the world of that guy and his artwork's great and he takes good care of his fans. So, everyone, I appreciate you stopping by. I always appreciate your time. Again, a big thanks to Manny, Tom Ryan, Michael Jocko, and Evan Leahy. If you haven't checked out their channels, go and do it. Give them a sub, please. 
and take care of yourselves everyone and make sure you enjoy your comics.